life, mental health, rare disease. That's what Never Give Up is all about. This podcast is a companion to my blog, pkujournal.com. I'm Kevin Alexander, and I've been a professional storyteller for over 20 years. I'm also an adult living with the rare disease phenylketonuria, or PKU. Since 2012, I've been traveling the world advocating for PKU, newborn screening, and rare disease awareness. Living with a rare disease can be a heavy burden. So on this podcast, I share thoughts, reflections, and stories to motivate you on your journey. Well, hello. It's been a couple of months. I finished season one of this podcast in July of 2023. It's now September, and I've been taking a much needed break. Summer is over, autumn is arriving, but someone needs to tell that to the weather. It's still hot. I've spent the last couple of months thinking about what comes next for this podcast. If you listen to season one, then you know that this isn't an interview-driven show. It's an opportunity for me to tell stories in a way that's different than what I'm known for. Videographer, filmmaker, I don't care about titles. I work with moving images. You can call me whatever you like. Visual stories. That's what I've spent my career producing. But at the same time, I'm a writer and keeping a daily journal is central to my mental and emotional health. So, when I created my blog, I called it PKU Journal. When I first launched it, the tagline for the site was Life, Mental Health, PKU. But as I wrote more articles and explored the intersection of my PKU lifestyle with mental health issues, I realized that these themes relate to anyone with a rare or chronic disease. And so, the vision for this podcast was born. And, both on the blog and this podcast, I'm exploring life, mental health, and rare disease. I see both the blog and the podcast as extensions of my daily journal. Everything I write, including this opening monologue, begins in my journal. This is how I think, with pen and paper. Yes, pen and paper. It's old fashioned, I know. But there's something about holding the pen in your hand and the time it takes to write out your thoughts. It forces you to slow down and think, reflect, meditate. Recently, I've meditated on a subject that means the world to me. I turned it into an article on the blog and then decided that it would make for a good, brief podcast episode. Going forward, I'll still produce full seasons of stories, similar to season one. But it's going to be a while before I can work on season two. Telling stories like that takes time. I do want to keep releasing new content here. So I'm calling this new series Kevin's Journal. And from time to time, in between full seasons of the podcast, I'll share special episodes with you. Some might document the journeys I take in advocacy as they are happening. Some might feature in-person interviews, edited into stories similar to season one, and some, like this one, might be from my blog. This first entry is about something central to my work in advocacy. Something that drives me. Something I believe in with all my heart. Newborn screening. Life is about perspective. Or rather, recognizing that your perspective isn't all that exists. I've reflected on this recently, a lot, because all year I've eagerly awaited the arrival of September, Newborn Screening Awareness Month. And 2023 marks 60 years of newborn screening in the United States. What I've been thinking about, what consumes me, is that there are many perspectives of newborn screening. Patients, parents, caregivers, patient advocates, doctors, researchers, lab workers, administrators, 
policymakers, nonprofit organizations, industry partners. But there's another way to view newborn screening. Two perspectives, really, that appear to be polar opposites. Those for whom newborn screening is a source of joy and those for whom it is pain, deep abiding pain. When I entered the world of newborn screening advocacy in 2012, the truth is I only saw my perspective of newborn screening. I had spent my entire life taking it for granted, even though I was diagnosed with phenylketonuria, or PKU, when I was nine days old. I received my diagnosis because of newborn screening. I was sent to a genetics clinic at Tulane Medical Center in New Orleans, put on treatment for PKU, and grew up into an adult with a good education and solid career because of newborn screening. Newborn screening saved my life. And so, early on in my newborn screening advocacy, even as I worked to raise awareness so that every baby born in the world might be screened, I still only saw it as a source of joy. It was hard for me to deal with this reality. For parents of children who receive no screening or a delayed diagnosis due to cracks in the newborn screening system, newborn screening is a subject that causes pain, lifelong pain. I've been away from the world of newborn screening advocacy for a few years. My activities as an advocate ramped up in 2013 for the 50th anniversary in the US and I was still involved for the next couple of years. But eventually, due to life, work, and time constraints, I chose to focus all of my energies on a specific project for the PKU community. It's a campaign launched in 2015 by the National PKU Alliance called Lifting the Limits for PKU. And that project opened my eyes to yet another perspective. PKU is considered a newborn screening success story and it is. We receive our diagnosis because of newborn screening. We have treatment options and children today can grow up into healthy adults. But there's another side of this PKU life. As I traveled across the country producing fundraising films for the Lifting the Limits for PKU campaign, I interviewed many PKU parents. And while they are forever grateful for newborn screening, it is still a source of pain. They will never forget the phone call. There is a problem. Some shut themselves away for a week. All struggled to accept a new reality in their lives as they battled their fear. Am I capable of raising this child? A child born with PKU only knows one reality. Their life with PKU is their normal experience. But the parent remembers life before. These experiences inspired an episode of this podcast in season one called Overcoming Trauma and Embracing Life. And those struggles continue daily for the PKU community. We're fighting for access to our medications for all who live in the U.S. We still fight for the Medical Nutrition Equity Act so that those born with PKU don't have to worry about brain damage and other side effects from not receiving their PKU medical drinks. Insurance companies frequently do not and are not required to cover those essential prescriptions. So, this year, for the 60th anniversary of newborn screening in the U.S., I am not just thinking about my experience. I was diagnosed thanks to newborn screening. Others weren't. I have treatment for my rare disease. Others don't. I can get my PKU prescriptions. Others can't. 
Yes, I celebrate and am thankful for newborn screening. It saved my life. And I'm thankful for my experiences as a PKU newborn screening and rare disease advocate. Those experiences have taken me across the world and introduced me to many people in the community, some of whom I now consider dear friends. But I'm also thinking of the children in the world who don't receive newborn screening at all, or those right here in the U.S. who do, but their rare disease isn't on the recommended uniform screening panel, and so they don't receive a diagnosis at birth. Both perspectives are essential. We can reflect and be thankful for what the newborn screening system has done. It has changed the lives of a generation. But we still have much work to do for those born today and for generations yet to come. I shared this on my blog at the beginning of Newborn Screening Awareness Month and posted it to social media. I connect with the patient population in our community on Facebook, where I've been for years, and Instagram, which I finally joined earlier this year. But on LinkedIn, I'm connected with those who work in the field of newborn screening and others in the medical community. I've been around this world for a long time now, and am a member of the International Society of Neonatal Screening. But I took a break from advocacy during the pandemic, an experience I shared in season one of this show. After writing this, posting it on social media, and then seeing it shared by those who work in the field, I am reminded of why I am involved in newborn screening advocacy. Yes, my role as a patient advocate comes first, and I am honored to represent the PKU community and other patient populations in my work. But the speeches I've given, where I speak to doctors, researchers, lab workers, and others who've devoted their lives to this field, when I look them in the eyes and connect with them on a human level and say thank you, it means the world to me. Newborn screening saves lives. It saved mine. It's the reason I can speak to you now and share my story. It's also the reason I speak for those who can't speak up themselves to share their stories. Every story matters. Every person matters. And we need to do whatever we can to make sure that newborn screening works for everyone.